Welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of November 13th. Now, we have a special episode this week because it's Game Awards week and I guess Game Awards nominees week specifically. And we mm-hmm. wanted to sit down like we do every year, actually, since we started this and just talk about and do our little voting for each category. It's very fun. A uh, couple ground rules. Uh, what we do is we generally vote which one we we have a small discussion what we think will win and then we vote on what we're going to vote on right um mm-hmm. if we have something that we feel like is snubbed of course we'll add that in uh unfortunately they don't do a write in which i wish they did i feel like they should really implement that maybe mm-hmm. do some sort of write in service for every category if you really want to you can just do a, a write in i feel like that'd be a very fun community aspect of it but aside from that pretty standard we're just gonna have some fun alex has joined me yet again as he does every year for these uh and i like these these are pretty pretty chill and we just get to complain about some things i will be bringing oh, up some sure. questions because there has been a lot of frankly angry people ever since this thing i mean every it seems like no one's ever happy so we of course are angry about this now and uh, i do want to ask alex some questions uh, and we'll yeah. do that at the uh, probably at the start of this before we go in now another note uh, we're going to be starting at most anticipated game, and then we'll be working backwards. Uh, yep. So because, game of the year will be last. Yes, yeah. We don't. I don't. You know, we don't want to do game of the year first. Cause no, yeah, right. What do we look like? So we're going to go back. We skipped, of course, all the esports thing because, frankly, I have nothing of value to add to that. A couple yeah. years, I would watch Overwatch. I haven't even watched Overwatch, so it's. Yeah, like, I used to watch League, but I'm like, I, it's been years. So. Yeah, yeah. So not really point. So uh, I think that's everything I've caught up. I also do want to uh, welcome any new people because uh, I had the biggest video I've ever released uh, launch recently, a couple of days ago. My, of course, my interview with Nick Caldera. I very much recommend you go check that out. Uh, it was a great interview with him. He sat down with me for an hour. We talked about. Uh, his firing, second wind, how he's going to be working with uh, formerly of Zero Punctuation, but now uh, I think it's called, I forget the name of the show, but Yahtzee, of course, the mind behind Zero Punctuation and what he went on to do, of course, fired from Escapist, and they're now doing second wind together. So go check it out. I think it was very interesting. It was a very great talking with him, and it was, a, it was very well received, which I really much like. Everyone was really nice in the comments. Thank you so much again for all of that. Alex. Hmm. Before we jump into the categories, hmm. there's two big things I want to point out. We're not going to point out the second one, I guess. We're going to just do the number one. But there was a lot of more complaining about hmm. names of categories. What do things mean? Yeah. I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind as we're going through these things. Okay. And at the end, of the, at the end when we finish all our votes, I'll have two questions kind of prime for you. One, centered hmm. around the naming scheme and convention that people are just increasingly just getting angry about. Mm. And then second, there'll be a couple snubs that we may discuss. Maybe mm. there aren't snubs. It'll be up to us to decide. Now let's get to voting. We're going to dog on this shit so hard. Probably, probably, but that's the fun, right? Yeah. yeah. We start with most anticipated game, recognizing an announced game that has demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Nominees are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades II, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. I mean, this is not a no-brainer for me, so I want to know what you think, Alex, about these nominees. So, they get me... <laughs> so, hmm. I care for for like half of them be- uh, just, be- uh, just because I was like, oh, this is not the type of game that I'd play, but it gets me excited just from what I've seen. Yeah. The other half, I just, it's not my type of games. I have to kind of echo a little bit there because yeah. in all reality, I'm going to probably play three of these games, Hades two, mm-hmm. final fantasy rebirth and star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. And only really one of them. I'm actually incredibly excited for And that's yeah. Hades two and yeah. nothing else is even close. Um, I, I do, I do wish you Chronicles was on here, but I get it. I just wish it was, but Hades 2 is probably my most anticipated game right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless we count Kingdom Hearts 4, which I would have liked to be on here too. But oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, maybe Dragon yeah. Age too, but you know, it, yeah. it, th- these are things that are very Elijah. So I understand that they're not in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I put, I, I had, uh, 
voted for Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah, it looks yeah, good. I w- yeah, I, I went back to actually see some of the stuff that they shown because I had never did, and I was yeah. like, it looks pretty cool. You know, you're in that world again because it was between that and Final Fantasy. Like, I just really want to know what what happens. Yeah, that's why I wanted to push it to you because I was very boring for this. I'm Hades too, and there's like. There's like seven miles. We go to a gas station. We stop by a Walmart. Then we go another ten miles, and then we are we're at like oh you know Final Fantasy. I guess I'll play it in Star mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah. No, I'm actually excited for Hades too because when I, I saw the trailer, I was like, damn, this looks good. And I was like, I played the first one or I tried it, and I just it it didn't stick to me. But yeah, me watching it, it I, I'm thinking about going back and trying it again. I loved it. I I I really yeah. steep myself in that game because I I. The, I just loved everything about it. And it was a very large game, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was yeah, kind of my sure. first real kind of rogue, roguish game mm-hmm. um, where, you know, the point is dying and these things roguelike. People love to call mm-hmm. them. It wasn't really the first, but it was kind of the first one I really fell in love with. And, and that's now one of my most mm-hmm. loved games ever now. Yeah. Moving on. Best adaptation. Recognizing mm-hmm. outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically Adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, Super Mario Bros. movie, Twisted Metal. I mean, it, we, it's we know, not right? even close uh, to yeah. Last of Us. I sure. can't imagine. So I will say I have not seen Castlevania Nocturne yet. Um, mm-hmm. Me and my wife have just been kind of slack on the TV shows because we've just been really into wrestling. We've just been watching mm-hmm. wrestling a lot, and that's those are so long that that kind of eats fight. up a lot of the week. So <laughs> we are watching <laughs> that now. Once we're done with it, once we kind of calm down, I'm sure we'll start Castlevania. We did start Miss Marvel and these things, so like we're trying to slowly get back into these like shows. But mm-hmm. I'm sh- I wouldn't be shocked if I actually would have voted Castlevania in this because the mm-hmm. first uh, the that first Castlevania is amazing. Yeah. So I wouldn't be shocked if I actually went with Nocturne after watching it, but I haven't seen it, so I have to go last of us. If if the original cast the the other Castlevania show was on here, would you have voted that? Um versus these? Uh what season, I guess. I, I guess if I, if yeah, it would have been the last the season? season. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Like if as a medium, I would have picked the Castlevania, but that's kind of cheating sort of. I would have mm-hmm. just said the if it was the last season or this, I would have said Castlevania probably. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sure a lot of people are uh, like that have not watched either Last of Us or ha- don't care for it. And uh, like, I'm sure they'll probably be like, oh, Mario Brothers, because, you know, they, they, if they have had their kids see it, things like that. Yeah, they probably think it's great. But it's down, of course, it's it was fine. Last of Us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was fine. It's not uh, you know, what's funny is uh, this is very PlayStation dominated. Uh, just because oh, they've been sure. they've been in full gear with these TV shows and mm-hmm. uh, and those things of the like, but yeah, I, I again, not to diminish any of these things, I'm sure these products are fine. I don't really care about Grand Scissor and Twisted Metal, but Last of Us, Super Mario, and Castlevania are great. Mm-hmm. Next, we have Best Multiplayer for mm-hmm. outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and mass- massively multiplayer experiences, irrespective. <laughs> of game genre or platform. Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, for me, this is actually much, much, much closer. This is the first time we've gotten something that's even uh, close to a decision for me. And Alex, I, I kind of at a loss. What, what, are you, what are you thinking at this category? I, I know I've played three of these games. Or four, but then just technically three, and my vote immediately goes to Boulder's Gate, and okay. I've been and I've haven't played the game a lot, and I but from what I've played versus even me playing Diablo four, and I think what we did we got what halfway through the game maybe a little bit more, yeah, pretty much, yeah, like on my yeah, and even me playing that. I played more of that versus Boulder's Gate, and I just, in my opinion, Boulder's Gate was just more fun. Yeah, my, my better multiplayer experience. For me, this mm-hmm. is actually the first one where I feel like I actually need to th- kind of separate myself between what will probably win. Because if mm-hmm. I ima- I imagine Baldur's Gate three will win, but I'm f- but I think as if we're talking best multiplayer by itself, I actually think Diablo four should win. Um, yeah, or maybe even Mario Bros. Wonder. 
because uh, I imagine that is a very fun multiplayer experience, although I am not played it. It just seems like a very fun you you and someone else kind of play it together, jumping around in these things. So I, I really do think Baldur's Gate 3 is winning here. But I think my personal vote would go for Diablo 4 just because I think that multiplayer experience is a tad bit better. Whereas Baldur's Gate 3 is very good multiplayer experience for sure. It is very, very mm-hmm. good. But Diablo 4 is almost the perfect, you know, you get together, you go in this dungeon, yeah. you raid this dungeon, you get this gear, you get better together, getting stronger together, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I it's agree. Very close. It's very yep. close, though. Moving on. Ow. Put that vote in. Best sports slash racing game. EA Sports FC 24. F1 23. Forza Motorsport. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Turbocharged. The Crew Motorfest. This is one of those categories where I almost don't want to vote, Alex. One, because I'm not very familiar with any of these games, quite frankly. Um, mm-hmm. But I will vote, however, because Motorsport was very good. And mm-hmm. it's always very good. So I just am just going to vote for that fun. But yeah. I do hear a lot of people actually very happy with Hot Wheels Unleashed. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I played the first Hot Wheels Unleashed and it was surprisingly really fun. It, it is kind I, of surprisingly good. <laughs> yeah, I, I never played the second one, but I've heard that it's it is it's better. But like it's I feel like it's one of those where like you play that when you're like in the mood to like mess around. Yeah, you never really uh, like if you want like invested. a full like on like racing game. Like I, I immediately go to Forza. Mm-hmm. I did not try the Crew Motors Fest, but like I was I like, didn't either. I I rather just play Forza Horizon. If whenever I that. yeah, whenever I'm in a racing mood, I just I gravitate to Forza. So immediately really, Forza. Yeah, yeah, and I'm never really any other thing. So I, I'm mm-hmm. going to say Forza, and I think Forza kind of sweeps. I can't imagine. Mm-hmm. I, although FC Twenty Four is just a very popular franchise, I actually wouldn't be shocked. Of course, this is mm-hmm. replacing FIFA. Uh, this is the this is FIFA, but they lost, of course, the licensing. So it is still popular if people understand that's what that is. I'll be curious to see if that wins just on sheer popularity. But I do think Forza probably pulls it here, and I actually will vote for it as well. Mm-hmm. Best sim and strategy game. Best game focused on real time or turn based simulation or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, City Skylines 2, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. I have to admit, Alex, um, I've seen games being played of Pikmin. I just can't imagine it being either a sim or a strategy game, but I guess it is. Mm -hmm. I have Uh, never played a Pikmin game. Yeah, yes. For me, I think this is between both Advanced Wars and Fire Emblem Engage. I imagine Fire Emblem Engage is probably sweeping this in like... Mm -hmm by a wide margin yeah that's where i pick that's what i picked so i probably would go advanced wars in this scenario uh and the only reason is because fire emblem gauge although is very good i still think it's it's missing a little bit of how good like something for instance fire emblem three houses was Mm -hmm. i think it was a very good game it's just that and also advanced wars to me is one of the best strategy games ever made Mm mm-hmm I'm wondering if uh, people don't re- like because it's a reboot. I'm wondering if a lot, how many people have played the originals and knew about it. So like, like people like like say, if I was a strategy guy and never played Advance Wars, me seeing, I'm like, mm, it's a a reboot of a game. I don't know. I'm I don't know if I'm gonna play it. I wonder if people are that I way. Do, I do think a lot of people probably are, uh, prejudiced against like a reboot slash remake mm-hmm. when voting for something like this, just because. I just think that it's like a stigma of like, well, it's older, you know, like, yeah, like it had a chance. (laughs) Yeah, it had a chance kind of thing. I think so, too. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Uh, Next up, best family game, right? Is that that the next one? Okay. Mm -hmm. It it freaked out out a little bit, so I had to make sure. For the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform, generally, this is the Nintendo category. Luckily, it, it does not seem it that way this year. Disney Illusion Island. Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, Super Mario Bro Wonders. Now, I complained that this is usually the Nintendo category, but for me, I think it's easily Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Alex, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Oh, ag- agreed. Um, the only thing I even think that can, it could rival it would be Party Animals, just because I've seen so many people play it lately. Yeah, yeah it's a big so like, like, game. I haven't right? heard anything of Pikmin 4. I heard Sonic Superstars was... Uh, eh. 
And yeah, uh, Disney is. Illusions Island looks cool. I just haven't seen anybody play it. I forgot it came out. I remember <laughs> seeing like a trailer, I think. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that exists. And then it, it's in here. And I'm like, it came out. So, I, I mean, I didn't mm-hmm. even know it existed, to be honest. So, yeah, I think Mario for sure. I think Mario sweeps. Best fighting. It just says best fighting. I imagine best what? fighting game is what it is saying. For the best game designed primarily around head-to-head combat. God of Rock. Mortal Kombat 1, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl 2, as it's very funny. Pocket Bravery, Street Fighter 6. I think this is a pretty hard one to guess who's going to win now. I think we can very much uh, be realistic and say it's between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it's one of those, like, it's it's one of those two. It is none of these other ones. You don't think Nickelodeon All-Stars is going to win it? I think if it if this turned into a meme, it would. Because it is a very mm-hmm. meme game because like Squidward can just dunk mm-hmm. on someone from like the Rugrats or whatever. So, you know, it's a meme game. I get it, but mm-hmm. I don't think okay. it, it gets this. I think it, I think Street Fighter 6 Mortal Kombat 1. It's between those two. And I think it's Street Fighter 6. Probably both my vote and what I think wins. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Even though I haven't played it, my vote's going to be Mortal Kombat. Yeah. But I think it's just I feel like I've seen just Street Fighter more on the like uh more popular side for like competitive Me types too. and things like that. Yeah. Like I I feel like that's gonna win. Even though it's I understand people are like, well, you know, it's been out longer. But mm. in that time span, I feel like I saw more Street Fighter Six stuff than I have seen Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat stuff. Even yeah. if we put those two timelines together in the in the time frame that they came out. I just don't mm-hmm. think it's it just feels like this Mortal Kombat doesn't have that much of the competitive backing about it. Maybe it does. I'm just missing it. I know that a lot of people are actually really excited for Omni Man in the in the game. So, I mean, yeah. you know, that kind of got like a second wind, I feel like mm-hmm. already with like memes and these things. So. There you go. The next one is hard. I haven't even been able to decide yet. Next one is hard. And I also want to bring up a problem I have, although. It, it isn't a, a huge problem. It's just interesting. Okay. Best RPG again. It's it just as best RPG. Yeah. I guess we. I guess it's called the Game Awards, so we don't need to say game every time. For the best game design with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences, Baldur's Gate Three, Final Fantasy Sixteen, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. A little bit of a spoiler here. This is the only time you'll be seeing Starfield for the rest of the show, which is very shocking. I definitely thought more people would be voting for Starfield and certain things. It looks like that thing fell off of the face of the earth the moment it came out. It's funny, though, because I feel like we can get rid of almost all of them because if you go by the category description, including massively multiplayer experience, then pretty much all of them except for Baldur's Gate do not have multiplayer. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. I'm curious if they mean like I'm curious why do they mean multiplayer, like multiple characters you play as or something? I, I was very confused. I, I, right? I was like, it's... why is that even part of it? Well, I was, I would at first I would have thought like, you know how certain RPG games you can like, like Baldur's Gate, you can play together or yeah. like in in li- like Lies of P as reference to like, let's say Dark Souls games, you can summon people to help. Like yeah. I was thinking like that multiplayer, but you can't do that in that game. So it's like, yeah, yeah I, I don't know what's going on, but. This actually, <laughs> Alex, I thought it was interesting. Liza P, little bit of a spoiler here, nominated for Best RPG, not in action game or action adventure, which is kind of weird. And see, that's that almost very weird. It almost because uh, I would have put it towards action. Uh, I action would have said game. I said I, action game. Yeah, yeah, I, it has RPG elements, though, but. To yeah. me, it, it it's like RPG light though. It kind of I don't know. It does have Maybe. stat screens in these things. I guess that's not true. I mean, and and you could change your weapons yeah. and things like that. There's a the lot you, you can can't do, change. Right? Is your is like what you wear, but uh, it's hard. This one, this one is actually the most difficult by far. Um, I would say when I hear best RPG, the best RPG is Baldur's Gate three. Because to me, it's just it's hard. Was Final Fantasy 16 an RPG game? I guess by definition it is. It just does not seem that it was, you know, like when I played it, I didn't think like, oh, this is a great role playing game. I I thought it was a great 
action game with role playing elements. I was, I, I, yeah, I would have said like action adventure. Action adventure with role playing elements, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's kind of mm. semantics and not really important to really argue. But to me, it's Baldur's Gate 3, followed closely probably by Starfield and Lies of P, maybe? That's what I'm thinking. I, I the only I only reason I wanted to give it to Lies of P is because this is the only category or part, it, of, that part it, of me also wants to do that <laughs> and it, it, well and they put it in the wrong category so it kind of messed them all up because they i guess did. like you said i would put them in action rp uh, in the action uh best action, action uh, and i yeah, probably would have voted for them over correct the things in that category so like being rpg it's not i wouldn't consider an rpg so i i can't give it the vote but i want to i just yeah. i can't right so uh, that's like i think i would give it to boulders game three as well Starfield almost had it, but I just see that more still as an action adventure game. It's just I don't know. Starfield, Even though like, I would say can... definitely is an RPG, but in but it's yeah. a, but it's more action oriented. But it's definitely yeah, a... yeah. It's like I mean yeah, because we would who do you con- think we would wins? consider Fallout? Who do you think wins? Baldur's Gate. I think so too. I don't think I think it's one of those where it's like I think this is probably as close as it gets. Like, this is probably, I think, a very close category because I think a lot of people might show up for Starfield because that was kind of mm-hmm. a drama thing today where people were complaining that Starfield wasn't in more things. So I do think they actually might get a lot of votes. I don't think it'll be enough, though. Yeah. So speak of the devil. Best action adventure for the best action adventure go. game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. All right, it's important. A couple things at the last there. Mm-hmm. Alan Wake 2, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Mm. Now, Alex, I immediately. Get rid of one? Get rid of Star Wars Resident Evil without even blinking. Right? Yeah. Like, not even yeah. a question. I, sla- I slashed him out of there. Then, yeah. f- followed closely by some further thinking, I probably get rid of Spider Man 2. Right. I, I just don't think mm. me personally, when I read the category for best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving, if if you want to think about it as like a talent tree, traversal puzzle solving, right? Puzzle solving is like three percent of Spider-Man 2 on, on how like graded. And then traversal is like one hundred and seventy five. Like it, like Good it's point. amazing. It's Good amazing. Point. web swimming and all these things. Right. Yeah. But. It doesn't quite, I think, touch Alan Wake 2 and Legend of Zelda and the way they utilize the environment with how you solve puzzles and these things. What are you thinking? That's kind of the way I thought about this. What what, what did you immediately go to? Yeah. I, hmm. I, I, I keep, I keep going to Alan Wake 2. Um, because I agree with you on the Spider-Man. It's just, there's, more traversal than puzzle solving in this. Yeah, and also like, I don't the puzzle and although there is puzzles in Spider Man, I don't think they're very good. Mm-hmm. And then like I was eyeing Jedi, but I was just like compared to the other ones, I was like, mm, I don't think I don't know. It just mm-mm. and then I, was, I think Zelda. I just I've yet to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I'm gonna give it to Alan Wake. So you'll vote for Alan Wake, who wins? Also Alan Wake or? Well, it's either that or Zelda. It's hard because one, we have all the industry freaking out of Alan Wake Two, but also all the industry also freaked out about Legend of Zelda. So I actually think this is actually quite hard. I imagine mm-hmm. Zelda wins because I feel like Spider Man Two being on here, I, th- I feel like people played both of those games and probably are skewing the pool a little bit, and that might pull away what needed for Zelda, maybe. Yeah. So I do feel like Zelda might win this. I am actually kind of struggling with who I want to vote for here. Because uh, I do really think Alan Wake 2, Legend of Zelda. I think Alan Wake 2 is a better game than Zelda. But I do mm. think but I do think Zelda was a better action adventure game, which is, I know, probably dumb to people uh, the way I'm no, just buying it. So I no, do I think I, I'm going to say Zelda you. because if we're saying traversal and puzzle solving, I had way more fun doing shrines than I did figuring out like the correct scene, which I won't spoil what that is in Halloween 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ooh, next one up. Usually my favorite category. Best, best action. action game. For the best game in the action genre, focused primarily on combat. Alex, it looks like your um, money went through it to Jeff Keighley. You, 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 got, you got your game in this. Armor Core 6 fires the Rubicon. Dead Island 2. <laughs> Ghost Runner 2. Hi-Fi Rush. Remnant 2. One of these things just doesn't belong. <laughs> like what, what, is, say, what, what is it doing here? Why don't we blow it off? I am not even voting for Dead Island. I, I know, I know. I was, I was half joking. I knew you actually probably wouldn't have voted. I think, but if I had to guess for you, it's between Armored if, Core and Remnant, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. If I voted for Armored Core, if Armored Core wasn't on there, he, it would have been a contender for Dead Island. But yeah, because so, Armored Core was on there immediately. If I had the power, you know, like some magical power, I would have thrown away Dead Island 2. Liza P goes there. I vote Liza P. There you go. Yep. Since oh, I sure. cannot do that, Armor Core s- s- fucking out of no, like Armor Core yeah. blows everything away. It's, it's nowhere close. And also, I think it wins yep. just because if if you you could say a lot of things about Armor Core 6, the one thing you can't say is the action wasn't good. The action is amazing. Oh, yeah. Great. Great action. Mm-hmm quite literally the best action of the year. So I think justifiably it wins best action game. Uh, I don't have anything to say about this, Alex. Do you best VR AR for the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality, irrespective of platform? No, I mean, I I can't skipping it. I've played a racing game on VR and I've played Resident Evil 7 on VR. So if I can compare those to these two games that are on this on these category and this like list of games, I would give it to Resident Evil if it's similar to that. Just because it's terrifying and it's just really immersive. It's but sad I, to see yeah. best VR AR games, and these are the games that they have to nominate for it. It just show it goes to show that like VR is just not having strong releases. Uh, Because I've heard nothing about any of these games. Humanity I've heard about, but not as a VR game. Resident Evil is a great game because it's... Sorry. Resident Evil is a great game before it was put as a VR game. Gran Mm -hmm. Turismo 7 is a racing game, which is inherently going to be a good VR experience. And then Synapse, uh, I heard nothing about. Horizon Call the Mountain, I heard, is actually disappointing to many. Mm. So it's disappointing on a five hundred dollar accessory. Yeah, five fifty or whatever it is, uh-huh. and then yeah, I gotta buy a game for it. Uh huh. Moving on. I, again, not voting for that. If I had to guess, I imagine Resident Evil wins, but I don't know. Mm, yeah. Uh, I can also skip this next one. This is best mobile game for the best game playable on a mobile device. Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, <laughs> Honke Honke Star Rail. Monster Hunter Now, Terra Nil. I imagine Honke Star Sara wins because all you know, a lot of people like those cartoons. So you know, this thing's <laughs> probably winning, right? Yeah, I, I'm good. I'm not voting because I do not play on yeah. mobile, and I have no idea any of these games. Best debut indie for the best debut indie game created by an independent studio: Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza Tower, Venba, and Viewfinder. Alex, you've played, I think, Cocoon. Did you play any of these mm-hmm. other ones? I played Cocoon, and I beat that. And I played Vemba, and I beat that. Okay. I didn't get a chance to play Viewfinder yet. I forgot that it had came out. So <laughs> I just... I'll be honest, I did too. <laughs> yeah, so... And then I've never heard of uh, Dredge or Pizza Tower. Yeah, I have not um, heard of Dredge or Pizza Tower either. Um, I have not played, honestly, any of these games. Vemba and Cocoon are two games I do want to get to. It's just mm-hmm. I was dominated by too many games yeah. this year. So yeah, I cannot Venbo vote on was, this. Venbo's really good. Like, his just story was really nice. It's it's nice and simple. Like, you know, you can yeah. do it in, like, two or three hours. It's just I, I've, it's I've seen uh, some clips, and, and it looks like a very fun game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the story is, like, really, like, you know, um, what's the word? Heartful, I guess, heart. Like, you know, it's, like, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, but and then, Cocoon just like the puzzles are so good and stuff like that. But so I gave it to Cocoon because I played that. I think that's winning. Those puzzles are so it's yeah the, the inception in these and the, the way to create it. Some of the puzzles that I've had to do, it's just like inception within inception. It's like <laughs> it, it hurt my brain because I couldn't figure one out. 
And so when I found one of the puzzles, I was like, okay, let me see how I do this. I watched the person do it. I was like, ow, my head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's how you do it. <laughs> Cuckoo might be a good stop after I am. Um, I just beat Baldur's Gate 3. Mm-hmm. And I might stop by and play something like Cocoon, you know, short experience I can kind of mellow out on. Mm-hmm. I don't know yet, but I do. I do need that kind of decompressor after Baldur's Gate 3. Mm hmm. Best independent game. This got quite of drama for outstanding <laughs> creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. I would argue Sea of Stars or Cocoon should probably win this. Uh, there was a lot of arguments that Dave the Diver probably should not count here uh, because I believe it was a subset of Nexon that was made specifically to make some games. And then they made that, which mm. is like, OK, that's a is that independent? I guess it it, it, it isn't really, but I, I don't care. I mean, again, this is more of the kind of drama around this <laughs> category or, or yeah. uh, sorry, the game boards, because one it shows a very giant disconnect in our industry because the people angry at this are the people voting for these. So it, it, it clear there's clearly a disconnect between uh, the greater games industry people and their peers, uh, because every time this thing comes out, it seems like we're getting more and more angry at like definitions. Let's not forget last year. Sifu was in best fighting game, which goes to show that people who are voting for these things, some of them do not know games clearly. Yep. Now, yeah. now that I'm done, uh, just randomly ranting in the middle of the <laughs> in the middle of this uh, game awards video, <laughs> Alex, I th- I'm mm. going probably for Sea of Stars here because I think it was just a more impressive kind of venture out for a studio. Um, mm-hmm. And from what I've seen, it is a very impressive game. Now, I have uh, not voted previously from not playing games. This one, I'm going to make an obsession because I think I can value these. Uh, ventures by actually not having to play them and just knowing the how the game industry works specifically. So I'm going to actually vote Sea of Stars here, and I actually think Sea of Star wins. Yeah, no, I I, I n- didn't get a chance to play Sea of Stars, but from what I've seen, it does look and like impressive, and like I I wanted to get to it, I just didn't get a chance. I will be getting to that. That um, that is one of the games on the list that before the year ends, I am playing Sea of Stars. Um, I voted for Cocoon again just because I really enjoyed the game, but I think Sea of Stars will yeah. win. I I think Sea of Star. I vote for Sea of Stars, and I do think Sea of Stars will win it. Oh, your favorite category, and best community support. Which just means the best game that is just ongoing and is a games as a service generally, mm-hmm. but not this year, kind of. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches. Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, No Man's Sky. Alex. Hmm. This also called a bit of hubbub one because Destiny 2 was nominated for this category and Destiny 2's community support team was pretty much annihilated. Uh, There's, I think, two people left on their community managing team. So that would be pretty bittersweet. And a lot of the people who were fired actually retweeted this. Uh, One of the uh, people replied to it and just had ha 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 all like uh, as just covering the uh, tweet. Uh, One person said, um. Uh, some choice words and these things so it's clear that uh the irony is not lost on anyone uh if i had Mm -hmm. to uh now that that's out of the way i do actually think they do very well with community i mean it's not really common for a developer to just make a weekly thing telling you what's going on with the game and the studio so i do think it actually is very good I am leaning towards Baldur's Gate 3 because they really did nail that early access and they clearly took in feedback from their community and it all paid off this year with the full release of the game. So I actually Mm -hmm. kind of am leaning towards that. But if I have to be really straightforward and something that I'm impressive with, Alex, and I'll be curious if you agree with me here. Cyberpunk 2077 did a thing where, of course, it launched the way it was broken. It was a mess, completely unfinished. Uh, in many aspects but they really sat down and made cyberpunk 2077 2.0 and phantom liberty completely reworked a lot of the game and kind of redeemed it 
Yeah. And they didn't have to do that. I, I, I firmly believe that they could have walked away from it, similar to what Bioware did with Mass Effect Andromeda, and just walk Anthem. away and be, and, and of course, Anthem as well. Uh, I wonder what those two games have in common. <laughs> um, I'm kind of leaning towards Cyberpunk here. I actually don't know. I'm, I'm pretty pretty hard to see what I want to join here. And also, I'm not a Final Fantasy in No Man's Sky, so those aren't going to be yeah. judged by me. Alex, what are you thinking here? Um, I agree with the Cyberpunk one. I, I was leaning towards that one. Um, I don't know about Final Fantasy. Uh, like, I've, I've been... It's been around for so long. I'm assuming I, the community I hear, is. I hear good things. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. not my thing. So. Yeah, and then uh, I didn't. St- I didn't stick with No Man's Sky enough to 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 notice the community and stuff like that. And I was gonna ask you about Baldur's Gate three, but you already uh, you answered my question previously. Mm, gotcha. Just like like how the community support is and stuff like that. So yeah. But I am thinking I'm leaning towards Cyberpunk just for this specific reason. They redeemed themselves in creating that. Yeah, and I think it, I think it is almost kind of like a good swan song for that game too, winning best mm-hmm. community, showing that hey, you know, we stuck with the game, we yeah. we, we kind of did this thing together, and then it is now. And I fully recommend Cyberpunk now, uh, whereas yeah. previously, no, for sure, yeah, I was like you, you know, stay away if you want like a pristine experience. Now I'm like go go in, get the DLC, enjoy, mm-hmm. and I, I'm gonna say Cyberpunk gets it. Um, and I have to be honest, I don't know who's going to win. I'm going to say Baldur's Gate three just because the the might of the game. I think I think there's a potential sweep this year by mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. Best ongoing game. It's very similar, I think, to best community support, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Apex Legends, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, Genshin Impact. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I guess it it's would be hard because I mean, like Apex and uh, Cyberpunk. I don't know. And see, I I, I feel like. Fortnite is gonna win because it's they, Fortnite. <laughs> they it's Fortnite and they just keep releasing stuff and they just release the OG map so people are in it right now. Yeah, I have to agree. I think Fortnite probably wins it. Like, like it's annoying because like it, this game annoys me because the moment you feel <laughs> like it's gonna die, they bring something out that brings everybody back. I'm like, oh my god, I get. And they brought they brought this back. I, I'm gonna have to jump in. Like mm, I literally that's... installed the game because I I wanted to try the OG map. Probably after that, I'm gonna delete it, and then I'm gonna see. I'm like, oh, Fortnite's still a thing, and then I see they're gonna bring something else back, and they just keep doing it. I, I um, so like, I enjoyed my time with the Fortnite OG map. I am, um, yeah, I same. actually did enjoy it. So I will actually say Fortnite here, uh, for best yeah. ongoing game because they're just always in the background, kind of killing it. And they recently, um, not recently, but I believe near the beginning of the year, they released the. I, I know it's not called this. I just call it Forge just because it's simple for me oh, to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to say what it is. So the kind of Forge system where you can make games inside of Fortnite and the more yeah, people yeah, yeah, play. Yeah. And they actually, Alex, I don't know if you know this, they're paying people based on like hmm. uh, how much is played in these things. And, and you oh, can wow. sign up for like a revenue service. So people are That's actively cool. getting paid inside of Fortnite to make good game modes. So uh, I I'm leaning towards Fortnite and I actually think it will win because uh, it's called Fortnite and it's probably gonna win. What yeah. do you think? I'm voting for Apex, but I think Fortnite will win. Okay. Just just because I I mean I why like Apex? Why Apex? It's just because you like it, right? Yeah, I enjoy it. I mean, Cyberpunk I gave it to the best community because they redeem themselves, but ongoing I wouldn't say ongoing. Yeah. For that game because it's not people are not fully like in my in my head I don't I'm not hearing about this game over every over single again. month you're yeah. hearing a few every few months maybe a quarter yeah. it's like a like, little update yeah like genshin impact i've i mean i don't know anything about it I, but i hear people I, people like it yeah, i hear I, the horny people it, love it they yep. love it and in final fantasy I, even more like they I, I hear more final fantasy than that but i just enjoy apex i i come back every season play a couple matches i mean it's it's apex Games for Impact, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. 
a space for the unbound chance of the sonar i hope i pronounced that correctly goodbye volcano high chia i believe is how it's pronounced terra nil venba mm. well i have to excuse myself yet again i have not played these uh, now i will be playing goodbye volcano high i heard it was actually very disappointing uh mm-hmm. which is unfortunate but i do still want to try it out uh and i've heard good things about venba uh mm-hmm. so actually i will retort that i will be voting uh venba i think actually yeah I... i'm voting venba because i've played this is the only one i've played and i it, I, I, I liked it i've seen enough like, of the game like... to know i think it's actually yeah. it should be voted for mm-hmm. i don't have much else to say i actually think venba will win because yeah. i think it's the most notable one on here mm-hmm. innovation in accessibility this is something i don't really can't mm. take too much to <laughs> recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience diablo 4 forza motorsport hi-fi rush marvel spider-man 2 mortal kombat 1 street fighter 6 so so to me alex um i'm actually gonna retract what i said i actually think i can't speak on this because i've heard quite a few things um marvel spider-man has some pretty good accessibility i've heard uh like they usually do but two things i want to point out here hi-fi rush is a game completely around going to the beat. They have yeah. ways for you to play it without even needing to hear the game, which is very impressive. I think and then it shows yeah. that they went the extra mile to make sure extra people could play this game. Literally, mm-hmm. the center mechanic about the game is adapted to ensure that as many people can play it as possible. Two, yeah. Street Fighter VI, I believe, is a game that just had a tournament and a blind guy won. And the way oh, wow. he wins, or the way, not the way he wins, but the way he plays the game, I believe, is sound. So, and it was actually debuted in one of the Street Fighter Six like, showcases. There's audible noises telling you where the character is. So, like, the closer they are, the the the, the, the beepier it is, I guess, for lack of a better word, the quicker the, 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 the beeps are. And then it, hmm. and you can kind of judge where they are via the sound. So, I, I think I'm going to give it Street Fighter Six. Uh, one, because clearly it works. <laughs> uh, and two, uh, there's other things that I've heard from the game that help a lot, too. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know that about Street Fighter 6. I was going to give it to Hi-Fi Rush because specifically of the sound thing. Like, like you can be somebody who has completely no sense of rhythm, and but you can still enjoy the game. So I really like that, and the art style is really nice and stuff. I'm going to look that up to make sure I'm not wrong here. Yeah. Yes, and of course, a blind player named Blind Warrior Sven impressed the crowd at Evil 2023 with a stunning victory in Street Fighter 6. Wow. You can go on Game Rant if you want to see more. And of course, it's Evo, so you can go watch it if you'd like yeah. uh, and see and see him. And he I believe he wins the tor- he wins the tournament, Damn. Uh, which is I mean. That's crazy. You can't he mm. cannot see and he, he won in the fighting game. It's awesome. My, I think if I had to give it to one category, Alex, I think this might be my favorite category. Uh, of course, not including Game of the Year. Best Performance, awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. Ben Starr from Final Fantasy 16. He is uh, the main character. Um, What is his name? Oh, my God. I'm blanking on. Oh, Jesus. I'm blanking on it, too. Um, they say it a million Clive, times. Clive. Clive, thank you. Cameron Moynihan from Star Wars Jedi Survivor. He was... What's his name? I don't remember any of these characters' names. Hal, thank you. Jesus. Cal Kestis. Cal Kestis. Idris Elba, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. Uh, It starts with an R, right? Songbird and who? R. R. uh... It's not Rook, is it? No, 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 no. Milani Liebert and Alan Wake 2. She is, of course, say, uh, Saga. Yep. Neil Newbert in Baldur's Gate 3. I want to say he's a Starian. Let me double check. Neil Newbern. What do you do? Is that his? Oh, uh, Reed. Reed was Cyberpunk. Thank you, Reed. I knew it was an R. Yeah. What did you play? Who? Neil yeah, he's a Starian. Newbern? Yeah, he's a Starian. I just had to double gotcha. check there. Yuri your Laurenthal, the Marvel Spider Man 2, he is of course Spider Man. Mm. Uh, which which is funny. Um he did very good voice work, but I actually would have given it to the uh second uh protagonist in Miles. 
in his um, voice actor. I think he actually did a better job than he did in that game, mm-hmm. but that's neither here nor there. I guess he wasn't the one nominated, so it's no point. Uh, Alex, yeah. who wins? And who are you voting for? It's going to be surprising, but I'm going to give it to Ben Starr, Final Fantasy. Okay. Tell me just, why. Just, just because, I mean, there's certain parts where, yes, I mean, he sounds like a little kind of like just the same, but there was certain emotional parts, like, I can feel it. Like, he like he, he does the, like, like when he gets really emotional and things like that, like, I can, I, I like it. Like, it's, it was good. And I like the way his voice sounds and stuff like that. Yeah, he did kind of nail what what he was going for he nailed it yeah for sure i think this is actually a stacked category i think this might mm-hmm. actually be the strongest category this year or at least so far i don't yeah. i don't know the categories super well uh leading up here but i think this is actually a great year and usually the performances are really good i think um two years ago was also very noteworthy in terms of how talented the category is and this is mm-hmm. just like any other year incredibly talented people i mean it is quite hard it's oh i can't i didn't i can't even do the thing where i'm like oh he's you know that's gone that's gone that's gone you know I, it, like really yeah. everyone kind of has a chance if i have to be picky here i guess i slice off uh yuri, yuri uh and then i go maybe yeah i almost gave it to yuri but i was like i have to go ben star yeah i think i go neil newborn or milani liebert it'd be between mm-hmm. those two um, just because the way she talks is so good, especially when you're in the pause menu is what I'll say. I don't want to spoil things for Alan Wake mm-hmm. 2 yet. Um, maybe another week or two, I'll start talking about the game a little more. But uh, the way the game pauses and the way that that works and the way that character holds scenes so low, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. It, that character isn't interacting with others in a lot of scenes. I would say mm-hmm. almost a third of the game is just her talking to herself pretty much i.e. Mm-hmm. you kind of but yeah she's talking to herself so yeah. that shows quite a unique skill set and i and i was still engaged every time she's talking now alex the reason i want neil i'm leaning towards neil is uh is because you and i imagine most people watching this have not gotten to the part where i actually think he it's the reason that he should actually probably win uh, in the culmination of Asterian's story in Baldur's Gate 3, uh, mm. is very emotional and very well told and very well acted. Very, very well acted. Yeah. Well, I was actually, like, when you said he was a Aster- Hysterian, I was like, oh, well, because as, as soon as, you know, I, like, any scenes that I've had with him, even early on in the game, I love his vibe. Like, I already, yeah. I, like, enjoyed, like, how he talks and stuff, like, how, like, like, oh, I can tell he's super cool, but he can, like, like he like just everything about him. I'm like, oh, I like you. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for me. Um, mm. I think I'll go. Uh, Neil, though, just okay. by a little bit. It's hard. It's hard, though. Mm-hmm. It's hard. I'm only doing it because I because, you know, we have to be semi quick here. I don't want to just sit here and think for for hours. So I think I'll mm-hmm. I'll just I'll pull I'll pull the uh, turnstile and just say Neil there. It's very close. I also, uh, by the way, Idris Elba is winning because his name is Idris Elba and he is very famous. So I think he is winning. I don't think anyone else has a chance, unfortunately uh, or fortunately. At least he did a very good job. There was one year a celebrity won. And they didn't they didn't deserve to win. Let's be honest Mm -hmm. with themselves. Mm -hmm. Best audio design. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. Alan Wake 2. Dead Space, Hi-Fi Rush, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4. I gotta be honest. Spider-Man mm-hmm. 2 has a very good soundtrack, but does it have great audio design? I would argue probably not compared to these other ones. It's very good. Yeah. Just just nowhere near yeah. these other games. I will yeah. say Hi-Fi Rush's audio design is so good that the entire game is made around it. So that's hard. Yeah. It's hard to like kind of justify anyone else winning. What do you think? No, yeah, I... I, I was thinking of High Fire Rush because I was like, oh, you know, the music's good and the beat's good. But I'm like, it's literally, I, I don't know. I, it's almost, hmm. it's almost like, it's like, oh, the, the, that the audio for the game is so good that like, well, you have to, you forget about how the combat is. And I feel like it just takes away from it. Right. So, uh, so I, I like, I, I didn't give it to it. I gave it to uh, Alan Wake. So it would be the between the first three, Alan Wake 2, Dead Space, and Hi-Fi Rush for me. Mm-hmm. 
it's really hard because Dead Space has incredible audio design. It is by it is it is a masterclass on how to make how to use audio to mm -hmm. enhance a survival horror game. Oh, uh, or sure. enhance really any horror slash survival game, period. Like, like yeah. it is I really do feel like if you are someone in the industry and you need to learn why audio design or if you just want to like kind of a fun thought experience, why is audio so important in video games? Play Dead Space, play it with headphones yep. and really understand yep. why it adds so much. And I really do think Dead Space is up there with like, I mean, that that is that audio design is is incredible. The every gun sure. sounds very like very good. <laughs> Well, even uh, the environment, like when you're walking around, you get the when, you, when you're stepping in, like walking, do, do, you can hear do, things do, in the do, vents and stuff. Yeah, and like there's so much things happening. You're like, where is it? A distant, yep. like stuff like that. It's like, oh god, like, it's just so it's so well crafted. Yeah, um, Alan Wake Two has great, great audio design. I, though, so it's just really yeah. hard. It's really I hard. I probably go Alan Dead Wake. Space. I think I'll go yeah. Dead Space. I think Alan Wake wins though. Yeah, I, I give it to Alan Wake just because, uh, like, there's certain parts, like, you know, like, that happens and, like, certain items that just the way... I agree certain with item, you, by the way. Certain items get, like, get used and I the sound, and it's yeah. just, like, you feel it. You feel it in the screen, like, when the thing, certain things happen and everything. Yeah. So that's why I was like, I pick it for that. I picked that. God, you changed my mind. I'm going Alan Wake, too. Mm hmm well i just remembered something and i was like nah it's that it, it really it really is like you see this piece of paper like that's how close that's how close mm -hmm. it is like a piece of paper length like it's right there in terms mm -hmm. of like which one's better it, at any given day i would pick one or the other it's it's too mm -hmm. hard to really pick one not check the next one this one i love best mm -hmm. score and music for outstanding music inclusive of score original song and or licensed soundtrack Alan Wake 2 composer Pietri Alonko I think that's how you pronounce it Baldur's Gate 3 composer Broslov Slav 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 Slavov Slavov thank you Final Fantasy 16 composers Miyoshi Soken Hi-Fi Rush audio director Suchi Kobori Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdoms uh, and that's just the Nintendo sound team <laughs> Just the sound team. <laughs> Alex. I I might have to retract. This might be the most sad category. Here, I, I mean, we have five incredible scores. Mm -hmm. I really don't know where to even begin. Please, what what, what do you want to start on? I, I, mm. I really I really don't know what to even go. I mean, Hi-Fi Rush, I mean, it's the scores of the game, pretty much, right? So, like, it's... So Incre that's that's incredibly so, made. So when I go by music and score, I go by like you know, like you said, like music and the score is what cr makes the game. But if you have too much of it, I feel like it it it, be it just becomes a little too much. Like with okay. Hi-Fi Rush, like it's good and it's awesome, but I it's like I need a I need a breather. Yeah, it's distracting. But, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Like I need, like, like with, uh, let, let's go back, uh, to God of War. You know, there's not music the whole time, but when a certain cue hits, boom, duh, like mm. you know, you're you get you get that eh, that suspense. You're like, oh, yeah, like like the score, like you know, when things happen, like I want that. But if there's music and there's stuff happening too much, it takes away from the game. So it, it, that's why there's always keys and timings. So like High Fire Rush, I would be the first one to take away. <sighs> I'm upset because I want to remember the music for Baldur's Gate. Uh, not Baldur's Gate, I'm sorry. Uh, Final Fantasy. Oh, and you're uh, struggling. Yeah, because I don't... I, I, I remember... As... Remember... I remember playing it, and I remember... I was like, oh... The, I'm loving this, like, like during certain scenes and fights, like the music is awesome. But I can't remember the like, like with Elden Ring, I remember the all the fucking soundtrack. Yeah, the this, Elden it's, Ring. It's, is it's, hard, it's hard for me to remember, yeah. but I remember loving it. So it's I, it's and it's just hard. Yeah, I um, I'm having no better time over here. I mean, I really could 
talk for like, hours of this category because it's just really very good and they're all good or sorry they're all incredible for different reasons almost legend of zoda mm-hmm. has such a great uh composition because it, it breathes so well throughout the game and no mm-hmm. it knows when to hit you hard at certain scenes i i will say if i had to be picky i would probably maybe push off zelda i'm not really sure uh because zelda has such good it, it's really really good but we're talking about three three to four times where i loved the score so i I, mm-hmm. I guess that would have to go uh versus spending hours discussing on which one i think i'll just have to i have to push one away I can't rush for Baldur's Gate, but what would you say about Baldur's Gate? Baldur's Gate is, um, I you know what? I'll just skip to that. Um, Baldur's Gate 3's score and music is incredible. Um, th- the the music is so good, actually. Alex, it, um, I think you commented on it today. You had called me. Oh, and I was, I was yeah. in camp. I was about to take That's a long right. rest. That's right. And you said like, whatever is happening in the background, I'm all about it. I think is quite is what you I, said. Yeah, and yeah. I, I was like, I was that like, is. Oh, I'm loving the music. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's my uh, character about to like take a long rest to yeah, yeah. rehabilitate, and, and I think that kind of speaks to it a little bit too. And also, um, the when I was listening to the credits, they kind of uh, they replay pretty much all the songs throughout the game, um, but they uh, do like revamps of them with different. So, for instance, um, uh, kind of the main theme was redone uh, ex- with like a man. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's the same song, but it, it feels very different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just little things like that that make that like kind of stuck with me. The score is really good. I uh, j- Literally just creating a character, the, the, the music in the created character screen. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, I forget the name of the song. It's like By the River or something or Cry by the River or something, something like that. I have it on my phone, on my phone. Oh, I was about to say okay. down of my phone. <laughs> And it sounds, I mean, I, I love that. That's one of my favorite yeah. scores this year. Mm. But Final Fantasy had those epic, that's, epic that's, scores in the boss battles. That's they what were, I remember remembering. It's like, it's like during the boss battles, every boss battle and the fights, it's just like, I remember the music. Yeah, and they're and it's turned to eleven. Like they're hitting you hard. Oh yeah, boss, and even the even the scene. like the ending cutscenes. You know, yeah, the, the loss. Like like that whole thing with the music. Like that's what got me. So I, it be, it's, it's between that and Alan Wake. One sticks out to me, which is uh, involves. I'll just say involves Bahamut. That theme specifically mm-hmm. was incredible. The music yeah. was so good. The beginning of the game as well has an insane insane score that the, the mm. it, it, that greets you immediately and i'm and it's like unreal mm. and it just goes to show you how crazy final fantasy 16 was mm-hmm. and alan yeah. way too i'm i'm a sucker for a mm-hmm. good cut to black cue the music i am mm-hmm. a sucker for it alex I think it's because I grew up with it, with all those shows that I watched. I was, you know, that was the thing, the ending, the end show, uh, the a song is playing on the background when something happens. Of mm-hmm. course, Vampire Diaries was very famous mm-hmm. for that. Uh, and Alan Wake 2 literally has cut the black cue, the music like that is like the thing Alan Wake does. And, and every time it happened, I I sit the controller down and I listen to the song every single time. I didn't skip it once. And mm-hmm. they repeat the songs, too. And I just wanted to listen to them every single time. It was always the the perfect kind of big thing happens. Cut the black, cue the music, and you kind of stew and and uh, try and think of like, okay, what just happened, and how and and how did it affect what's going on in the story and these things. And mm-hmm. Alan Wake Two, I mean, nails what a lot of games kind of have trouble to is the 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 music Licensed almost inter- soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, that's and also um, the music interweaving into how the gameplay left you and again mm. no other game really does a cut to black episode esque scenario like Alan Wake does and uh it goes to show like what they learned from Quantum Break and uh, past experiences mm. and and you know the original Alan Wake was a lot like that too but mm. enough of my spewing um I guess we do have to pick something here Alex mm. uh and I think I go Baldur's Gate 3. 
Final Fantasy. Who and I think would win? I think Baldur's Gate. I also think Baldur's Gate 3. But and I'm picking it, Final Fantasy. Yeah, I, I think... Um, I, I, I would not be mad if literally any of these win. I just want to be clear mm. about that. If I, I would actually love if Final Fantasy wins because I do think they deserve something <laughs> and mm-hmm. they might not win anything. But I, I, I think if they win anything, it should be probably best score. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say it's it's become my favorite Final Fantasy. Oh, like I had to think I had to think about it. And like I was like from the ones I've played. Yeah, you played like, like so... a handful of them, right? Like four or five of them, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because so, I, I've played. Yeah, yeah I mean, I played sure. playing seven. I've I've played a little bit of eight. I've played ten, almost done with ten. <laughs> almost. Uh, yeah. Which one was? Uh, you played a little bit of of twelve, or sorry, eleven. I'm which sorry. one's Zodiac Age? Was that eleven or twelve? That I'm sorry, that was twelve. I was correct the first time. So you played yeah. twelve. Yeah, I played. Uh, yeah, and then thirteen, of course. And then 14, that we started it, but never even played more of it. 15, 60, yeah, so I played a good bit. Yeah, you played a good bit. But yeah, from what the ones I've played, yeah, this has been my favorite. Good enough. Hmm. Best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical t- technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I hate Lies of P here I, because I, I already got my vote. It's not winning. For me, it's, it's only winning. two. It's not winning, but I, I'm voting for Liza P. I think Liza P, it's so close to having better art direction. But for me, Alan Wake 2 just is that little bit ahead with the way it incorporates a lot of the art into the storytelling. And mm-hmm. the way a lot of the art backs the narrative in a very strong way. I will mm-hmm. give light examples that aren't spoiler spoilery. When you're playing as Alan Wake, if you look at some signs, it tells you what's kind of going on, sort of, in a yeah. loose way. There's things as when you play a saga that are on TV that that are uh, very well done. And like there's this very specific yeah. art direction that they handle with enemies uh, that work very well. And certain jump scares, uh, although not inherently what people think of art direction, I think... Uh, is very important to to this game's kind of art direction uh, with mm-hmm. the kind of black and white, very grainy, textured film that pops up a lot throughout the game. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think Alan Wake is the best art direction of the year. And you yeah. were picking um, Liza P. I, uh, I picked I, the I Liza P. I think that's a great. I think that's a great pick. Why? Why did you? Pick I just. I, I mean, I just love the way. I think, in my opinion, this is probably the best adaptation of pinocchio that anybody could do okay like yeah like like the just being in a just being able to see this world as as i was like i never i mean i i never thought of it being a like what would you say this uh it's not medieval what's the what's the 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 blood victorian victorian thank you victorian age you know style game you know you have this arm that you could change. You have these robots, you know, there, there are puppets, like all that stuff. I just love what they created with this uh, old story. Do you have anything I, that uh, screams at you artistically? Like, is there something specific? Is it something that Pinocchio, like his, his design, is there something tied to maybe uh, the design of a specific place that we went to? Um, Weapons, anything, everything. No, I. Yeah, I mean, I. I love. I mean, I. I mean, I guess I love just. I've never. We haven't seen a, a game that you can change the handle and the blade, yeah. and you can make so many different weapons, mm. and it changes what you do. Like that's probably my favorite part. Right. That it's just it, it's just uh and then and then of course just all uh, all the uh, you know all the enemies or everything is robots but they're puppets so like i just seeing that and like it just goes back to like the i robot yeah. you know thing and i just I, I like it well said next up best narrative for oh, outstanding shit. storytelling and narrative development in a game 
Alan Wake Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, Final Fantasy 16, Marvel Spider-Man 2. What are you doing here, Marvel Spider-Man 2? No offense, I don't think... uh, (laughs) You should be here. I think Liza P should be uh, there instead of Marvel Spider Man. If I have being totally honest, mm-hmm. uh, Alex, uh, another strong I category. Mean, another strong category. I love Cyberpunk's very spy thriller esque gameplay, or sorry, uh, narrative. I love Final Fantasy sixteen, although uh, it does not keep this throughout. I love the beginning political thriller. Uh, how dense the story was, and all these things. Uh, it quickly deters into a usual Final Fantasy game about halfway through the game, which is why I don't believe it should win. Or at least mm. I don't believe um, it. it the, I should backtrack. Um, not that I don't believe it should win. It does not get my vote. I should be much mm-hmm. more clear about that. So for me, um, Final Fantasy 16, although a great game, um, I just did not love where the narrative ended up. And Marvel Spider-Man 2, although it was a great story at a lot of sections, I don't think where we end is also very strong. So I'm going to have to immediately mm-hmm. take those two out. Alex, what what are you thinking going into this category? I agree with uh, Final Fantasy and Spider-Man. Uh, like, love the story, but like the way it ends, it's just like, you know, it's kind of like, okay. Uh, like, I mean, like Spider-Man and, or not Spider-Man, Cyberpunk. I, that, that one, I just, I guess it, it, it hmm. It's interesting because there's just so many. It was different endings, different things that you could pick. Four different yeah. endings. So there was those. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to pick a best narrative when there's multiple narratives. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, like, so it's always it's just hard. Um, I mean, I mean, you're probably gonna say that uh, you could say the same thing with Boulder's Gate. I I haven't finished it, but you told me. I I don't like, have as much of a problem because I kind of. Th- see my playthrough as the core playthrough i know that sounds kind mm-hmm. of reductive especially when yeah. we're talking about a game like this but for Baldur's Gate 3 it's not like i beat the game and i was like well let's see what all the different endings are like i you know i didn't look it up i know what they are but i don't know how it ends uh mm-hmm. so if i if i was judging it based on base narrative i i would say my playthrough was the best narrative but as a critic that isn't the wisest thing but also should we be like other industries i don't think so i think games should be yeah. more unique than that what are you thinking uh back back to you you see you were out uh, expounding and, on cyber yeah yeah no I, and then um well i was gonna say i can't i can't speak for Baldur's gate um and for alan wake 2 i was just like like the narrative the narrative was great it was, it was just certain parts where it was just kind of like it was doing like the infinity sign to me. I was like going back and instead of a circle, I was just like in my head. I'm like, okay, this and this, this and this. I'm like, okay. So it, it was, was kind of lost me at the end. It was a spiral, all right? <laughs> it was a spiral. Yeah. <laughs> but it kind of lost me. And I'm like, okay. And so like the ending kind of uh, didn't upset me. I was just like, come on. So it's hard to pick on. Uh, if I had to give it to anybody, what you do? Oh, he's really Final, Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Oh, wait, whoa, really? You backtrack mm-hmm. there. You said you said you didn't want it. Now you're back to it. Please tell me why. So, well, because I have to think about it. Like with Cyberpunk, I was like, the end. The endings were cool, but. Not saying that I didn't care, <laughs> but you didn't. Care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I no, I get it, especially with the the nature well, of it, the expansion. Like it's hard, you know. It's we, it's you know what the game ends. The ending that the I wanted, ends, so. I'm not gonna get because the ending that I want doesn't. The exist. character's not. It, yeah, it's not involved. The character's not involved. So like I, I. So I, it's just like the ending we fun. want it was never going to happen in this game. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and like in Polish game, like I said, I can't speak for it. I I hope you said it was a great game. So like I, I can't wait to go play it. And Alan Wake Two just confused me, my 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 poor little brain. <laughs> and then uh, Spider Man, like I love the ending, but it's just like. We spoke about it. We just we have a whole spoiler cast on ECTVs right now that you can go listen to if you want to know yep. our thoughts 
on the Spider-Man too. I, I, I again, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not what I expected in a in in a bad way. I guess. Yeah. It's a better way. I mean, out of all of them, like the the endings that I was like, I was like, at the end of the game, I was like, that was really good, and like I was satisfied. Was Final Fantasy? Okay. So for me, I've kind of been struggling. I kind of put Cyberpunk on the wayside. Uh, only because although it was good, it's hard to put it up against Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate 3 uh, just because you're able to cover so much more ground in both of these two examples. Mm. Uh, so I immediately want to gravitate towards Alan Wake 2 because it has such a unique narrative and a mm. unique way of telling you the narrative. So I'm yeah. almost like, mm, maybe I go Alan Wake there. That's or, why it's like kind of hard. But with Baldur's Gate 3, it completely gives you control of the story in many ways. You can do pretty some pretty crazy stuff in mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate 3 and kind of really make it your own. And there's some crazy endings that you can uh, pull off and uh, very unique things. And they have unique ways of playing the game, of course, with the Dark Urge playthrough that everyone loves, where you play as a psychopathic murderer. There's just so <laughs> much uh, that the narrative offers. And at least in my instance of what I got, I was very, very, very very happy with the narrative especially starting where i started and where we ended i enjoyed mm. quite a bit yep so i think who are you giving it to lies of p oh my god I, yeah lies of p <laughs> <laughs> um oh my god it's hard yeah I, no like, it, it, it's yeah, no, it is difficult. I thought it'd be, I thought I would be like, it's Baldur's Gate 3, and I'd click it and just move on, but I can't. Mm-hmm. Alan Wake 2's narrative was so strong. That's why I'm like, mm. And see, I love the narrative through the whole, the whole game, but then once we hit that ending, and it was trying to kind of like explain everything, and then not explain everything, it lost me. Yeah, I get it. This game is not for everybody. <laughs> mm just the nature of the way it is it's not for everyone i mean i'm excited for remedy to continue where like what whatever ip they have next like I, i'm i'm well, loving remember we have doing. two expansions for this game before that mm-hmm. yeah and then we have control two mm-hmm. at some point i mean so far this. it's been three out of three i mean uh remedies done quantum break control and this i mean each one i mean we i've we've enjoyed yeah So they're doing something, right? I I don't I I don't know <laughs> I don't know, man. I do, I I'm struggling, dude. I I feel like whoever's listening to this is like it's easy for them. I don't. I just I it's right. I'm struggling. I'm gonna, really, I'm, I, I'm gonna remove two for you right now. Cyberpunk and Spider Man. Go. I mean, take out no, three. no, no. For me, it's between <laughs> Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate. Like that was never a problem. Okay. It's just those okay, okay, two. Okay. I'm struggling. Hmm. At the, end of the, one of at, the end of, at the end of the day, when you think about the ending that you got, what are you more satisfied with? I'm going to say Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. It's really hard. It's one of those things where if you ask me tomorrow, I might even have a different mm-hmm. answer. And then the day after that, I'll have a different answer. Yeah, because I mean, you could say you could say with Alan Wake, you know, different things. I liked Alan Wake too. Yeah. I loved the ending and I love a lot mm-hmm. of the narrative. It's just. The way Baldur's Gate 3 handles the narrative is very strong. Mm-hmm. And, and literally the way I wanted to, to the game to end with a specific yeah. character. You told me that yeah. way. And, and it's yeah, like, there you go. And I had, a big, to me. I had a big dumb smile on my face the entire time. Hey, there you go. That's how you I, ready? That's what I like. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Uh, no, no, I was going to say I normally when I when there's a game that has you ending on a high with a oh, yeah. with a smile a like that. Big old smile. You, you can it. ask my wife. My big old smile on my face. Yeah, you got to give it to it. Uh, what was your vote? Final Fantasy. Thank you. I I, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh. Best game. <laughs> best, game. <laughs> best game direction. Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Alan Wake Two. Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Alex, if I may steal this away, Mm -hmm. uh, I immediately gravitate to Alan Wake 2, Super Mario Bros., and Legend of Mm -hmm. Zelda. 
Now, the reason is we're talking about game direction. Now, Baldur's Gate 3 and Spider-Man 2 do have great game direction, but I do think the way Alan Wake 2 gives you the world and the way it is linear but isn't all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I at no point was I ever lost in Alan Wake 2 at, at all, yeah. ever. I never was like, what do I do? Where do I go? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I think it is between that, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Nintendo's a master at game design. That is what they will always know. If you can bet one thing, Nintendo will most likely never make a game where the actual design of the game is bad. Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Legend of Zelda are no exceptions to that rule. Mm -hmm. Zelda has great game direction throughout the entirety of the game, and I played a lot of that game. That game is very, very well directed. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a 2D Mario game. That should be all I need to say of how good the game direction is. So for me, it really is between Wake, Mario and Zelda. I think I'll take off Mario just because I think Wake and Zelda are more impressive in that specific avenue. Um, mm -hmm. While I think about it, Alex, what, were you, what, what, are you, what are you thinking on this category? Um, I'm leaning towards Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate. Um, oh, okay. don't, even though I haven't played enough of it, from what I've played, uh, just from what... I, I I feel like this is game. Di I don't know if this is more go to. I don't know if this is art. Di art I don't know if this would cons be considered art direction or game direction. But um, me thinking, I'm like, oh, I wish D and D was a video game. This is immediately what I would think. Baldur's right. Gate three is D and D in a video game. So like, I like being in, like the fact that you're doing a uh, doing do the roles and like you know you have your pros and cons and you know all your. So just the way they did everything, I just I don't know if you consider that game direction or art. Yeah, no, you're nailing it. You're you're nailing the direction, the way the game is made, and the mechanics mm -hmm. and these things. But yeah, like 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 I think is it is Bold Boulder's Gate is really the only game that's done that, right? That's done pretty much D and D. Um, I wouldn't say the I only one. If, I would I say the know. the one that's the that everyone thinks of. If you think about the way it makes it the the way they do the game a lot of games have actually done D, D when games were first being made because the way we do rpgs comes from D. &D. literally mm -hmm. your care the character sheet is mm -hmm. the rpg stat screen in that's true name an rpg dark souls liza p bloodborne um what are some other things like a random you know final fantasy games these are all yeah, yeah, that's true. stem they have stats from character sheets in Role playing games. So it's happened before, but not many have literally showed you a piece of dice and rolled it on the screen. It has happened before, yeah. but it's not as yeah. common. Of course, Baldur's Gate did, did these things before, too. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but it is uh, uh, well put the way it kind of introduces um, or almost reintroduces the aspect of a more centerized D&D thing, because I don't think a lot of people do know that that's pretty. I mean, the the roots of of RPG and game design is from D&D &D. Mm -hmm. almost exclusively almost yeah um and then of course with Alan Wake 2 is just being able to go back and forth yeah like the direction the, the is way, incredible yeah the way the way they did they do certain things even when you're playing as each character and those characters have to do certain things that affect the game it's just, I think I'm gonna give it to Alan Wake I think I will too uh yeah. very uh, very close to Zelda though Mm -hmm. um i think zelda it is so close because the game direction of zelda is phenomenal i mean nintendo is really the masters of game design and direction you know what i'm gonna actually go back on that i'm gonna say zelda for this category because mm. they are so good they are so so good with game direction the category is up next the one to end them all game of the year for the year of 2023, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. We have six nominees this year, as of every year. Alan Wake 2 by Remedy Entertainment. L uh, Baldur's Gate 3 by Larian Studios. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 by Insomniac. Resident Evil 4 by Capcom. Super Mario Bros. Wonder by Nintendo. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom by Nintendo. Why is Resident Evil here? Alex, why is Resident Evil 4 on here? Now, I will say one thing. I understand that this is a very important game to a lot of people. These are that Resident Evil 4 is the best game of all time to a lot of people. So I respect that. 
But in this year, Resident Evil 4 Remake is better than Liza P? God, no. Are we saying that? Everybody out there? God. No. Are, are we saying Resident Evil 4 is better than... I mean, I'm going to say it. Starfield? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Starfield isn't even on here. I'm going to be honest. I'm not really that crazy. Like, I'm not really that heartbroken like, about I would, that. I would, ta- I would take away uh, Resident Evil, of course. I would, e- I would even take away Mario to put Ooh. Starfield on here. That's pretty. That, that that's gonna get people upset. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, I I'm right there with you. They'll be all right. But I, that that that's a hard truth. I don't think many people are ready for. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. Resident Evil Four. Yeah, I mean Diablo 4, Armor Core 6, Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy. Where is that? No nothing. That's not even in the no nominees at all this year. I mean, it, it had a lot not going for it. <laughs> it came out in February, I think. And also, you know, there's a whole thing going on around the author. I don't know if you heard about it. Um Final Fantasy 16. What's going I mean, what's going on here? Resident Evil 4. I'm gonna take a second and be let, and just let you all know. It is an important game for the uh, was it? It was the GameCube, right? I'm not crazy about that. That's when it launched. Resident. I want to make sure I'm right for this before I <laughs> bash this game. Resident Evil Four. Wikipedia. Just GameCube, double checking. Correct. Yes, it was, I know. I, I knew I was, but I didn't want to sound like an asshole uh, after I make my spiel. <laughs> Look, Resident Evil Four is a great game. I played it for the first time when it came out. This apparently is the best version of the game. That's what everyone tells me. It was fine. It was a great game, even, I'll say. The mm. narrative is all over the place, just like with every Resident Evil 4. You're saving the president's daughter. Like, what? What? Like, that's such a 1990s, like, action game movie thing, which, great for that time right now. I don't really care about saving this random daughter. Mm-hmm. The The writing, not great. Let's be honest with ourselves. The dialogue, not great. Not not great, not really at all. Why are we out here pretending like this game is like as good as? I'll say Dead Space is better too. Oh, for sure. You guys aren't ready for these hard truths. Do you understand me? Dead Space is a better survivor horror game than this. I'll say it by like ten times. Oh, you guys aren't ready for you, that. Mm, you want you want you want me to you want me to upset some people right now? You're probably about to say something insane, but go ahead. Well, what do you think I'm about to say? It's a game that I think is better than Resident Evil 4 as a whole. Cyberpunk? I don't know. Alien Isolation. I'll get that. That's not not crazy. That's not crazy. To me, it's a way better survival horror. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't don't blame you for that. I don't blame you. I'm just shocked that Resident Evil 4 and that. And again, not saying it's because it's a remake. I just don't think it was that good. I remember when I beat Resident Evil 4, Alex, I I think you beat it before I did. So I called Mm -hmm. you and... You were you were like you were like what what did I think and I was just like this is the game mm-hmm. this is this is the game we're freaking out again yeah because I had play, beat it before and then I beat the remaster and then you finally beat played this one for the first time and I again like, I'll say this again this was a very very good game for the time in both design for, yeah a three D environment this was a very important game for uh for when it came out on the GameCube uh, this is unique but. Well, it was the first time. Like it was the first Resident Evil that was more open, I yeah, guess, yeah. because uh, two and three, you were, yeah, the you house. were, you were running yeah, yeah, you were isolated, you were isolated to a house, and you had either Nemesis or uh, the this Mister or yeah, Street, Mr. whatever you want. Is it Mister Nobody? I, I forget what? what the dude in the jumpsuit. I forget Nemesis. His name. Oh, Mister X. Is in... and, thank you, Mister X. In I wanted th- to say Mister Nobody. Mister yeah. Nobody, I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From you Fast got, and the Furious. Yeah, you get Mr. <laughs> X and you get Nemesis. So this is the first the one brothers. That, that you had like an actual mission or like level, level type that you could run around and do things. So maybe that's why it was so big, but I don't see it, dude. Oh, Anyways. this is gonna be so hard. Yeah, no, this is um, this is rough for me. Um, so I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you why you think of yours. Why it's gonna be difficult. Alan Wake 2 ending confused me. Okay. Boulder's Gate, I have not beaten. Correct. Spider Man 2, I was not satisfied with the ending. Okay. Zelda, 
Haven't finished it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> and Mario, I mean, this is Mario. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Mario. It's a Mario game. So I'm like, I don't. I'm at a loss here. I don't know what I can give it to. Yeah. So for me, I'm not quite as bad off as you are. Um, I enjoyed Alan Wake too much more than you did. Baldur's Gate three, I just finished, so I am fresh off of a finish off that. Marvel Spider Man two, great game. It's just not contending with the heavy hitters here. It does not contend with Zelda, Baldur's, or Alan Wake. Not even close. Resident Evil 4, lol. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I love Mario, I, I, but, you know, it's Mario. I love it. It's just never going to be, it's not going to be a me game. It's never going to happen. I'm not a 2D guy, and although they do a lot of things different with this Mario game, at at the end of the day, I'm still playing Mario. And again, I love, I love it. It is great, mm. but I'm a narrative guy. I want some narrative in these games. Um, mm -hmm. I just I, there's only so much gameplay you will do for me, and the gameplay is ten out of ten for Mario. Rogers I Stone. honestly, I mean, I that tells you when I think about it. I'm about to upset you. Oh my god! What you I, I think, I think that's the reason I would choose Spider Man before Zelda. Oh no, that doesn't upset me. That's I fine. mean, well, no, like, it, like I feel like it has just more narrative. I I enjoyed playing that game more than I did Zelda. Zelda has narrative this time. I, I would I will contend with people saying Zelda doesn't have a great narrative this time because I will yeah. agree Breath of the Wild had not great narrative. It had great lore and it had a great beginning to start the game. But mm -hmm. throughout the narrative, it really is just here's a little bit of, of what happened w when you like went to sleep. Zelda's over yeah. there. Go save her. And that's like kind of how it feels, right? Yeah. With this one, I was way, way more interested in the narrative, way more interested in the story, way more interested in how Hyrule would turn out with Link, with Zelda. I mean, by like 10 times over. Loved, mm -hmm. loved Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Loved uh, Baldur's Gate 3, loved Alan Wake 2. So these are three games that I love and that are going to stick with me mm -hmm. for a long time. And now I have to choose my favorite child, which is... Not great. Mm. I'm assuming you're giving it to Spider-Man 2, right? Or maybe Alan Wake. I assume that's between those two for you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alan Wake and Spider-Man 2 for you. For me, it would be Zelda, Baldur's, and Alan Wake 2. I gotta take off one of these. What, which one is it gonna be? Hmm. I don't think like my prior like in my head I'm like which one did I enjoy more? I'm gonna take off Zelda. Mm. So it's between Alan and Baldur's Gate three. See, I need to play Baldur's Gate because I feel like it probably would have won. Hmm. Baldur's Gate 3. Mm. I think it's Baldur's Gate 3. And I will say mm. it is not an easy choice. I think I'm leaning towards Alan Wake 2 just a tiny bit here. But I think I have to say Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and I will say very quickly that Zelda really is calling to me because I'm remembering the certain side quests that I did in that game that were very touching. I'm remembering... I'll just say getting the master sword was very moving and very, very, very important to me in that game. Um, mm -hmm. And learning, uh, learning more about Zelda in tears of the kingdom was my favorite part of the game. And I couldn't get enough of it. And I, and I love doing, I love making things in that game and these things. So I think it's actually a much stronger contender than I actually gave it credit for. I actually would probably put it maybe much, much closer to Alan Wake 2 than what I originally thought. But upon further reviewing, Baldur's Gate 3 takes it. Alan Wake 2. I'm shocking. Tell me why. I actually really, I really did think you were going to go Spider-Man 2 here. So I thought about it, but like in my head, I'm like, okay. Near, and like in my head, I'm like, story, like as I was playing the game, I, I, I enjoy... Like I love playing Spider Man. Like the co combat's awesome, having uh, doing all the stuff. Like and then, but the nar the narrative, it just felt it felt a little too familiar. 
Um, it just I felt like like certain like by the end of the game, I was just like I just felt like I was a, I was like I feel like we've done this already. As uh, and like just throughout the game, like I was like, oh, this happens. Oh, so this is gonna happen. Oh, okay, this is gonna happen. It's fun, but I, I mean, I, I it was kind of like, it, I, I kind of see, I saw where it was going. Yeah, so it was, pre- the... it, was pre- it was more predictable. It was fun. To, to um, it was predictable. To not spoil anything. Yeah, but to give slight insight, and again, go to the spoiler cast if you want to know more about the the game. If you, if you, Alex, would have sat me down and gave me a pen and, and you're like, write what you think will happen in Spider-Man 2 in like a paragraph or two, I think I literally would have gotten 90% right. Yeah. 10% would have been a surprise in the game that I, I talked about. The easy the 60%. Yeah, easy, easily, I think almost anyone who even tangentially knew about the game knew about, like, would know. Would know. Yeah. And there's one... St- I mean, I don't think this is spoiling anything. There's one thing that's a, that they pretend is a secret and it is not, which is weird as fuck mm-hmm. that they do it. Um, but yeah, again, uh, this kind of turned into us just dogging Spider-Man 2, but I mean, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, um, uh, Alan Wake 2, uh, please yeah, I picked Alan Wake 2 just because, yeah, just because I, I, I was not, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I was literally like, like even though like, um, what was it? Because uh, like even though like the ending kind of like confused me a little, and I'm like, oh well, you know, I, w- I was kind of like dissatisfied a little bit of the ending because I w- and that was only because I wanted more. I want to know, you know, I want to know, you know, e- more stuff and things like that. I understand it better, but so like, but throughout the game, I'm just like, I I was enjoying what was happening the whole time. Yeah. So I that's why I was like, I think. I gave it talent like God, it's so close. And now, yeah, at one point, at one point, I never thought I was like, oh, that's about to happen. It's so close. And, and this actually makes me go back when you're talking about the game to go, go back to best narrative. I was mm-hmm. like, Alan Wake has such a good narrative. So it makes me like want to go back and be like, nah, actually, no, Alan Wake has a better narrative um, than. It's it. And now I want to go play a Baldur's Gate just so I could see. I'm not going to pretend like you'll love, love it. I think you will, but um, I actually did change uh, to, to, to be transparent. I changed my vote for best narrative to Alan Wake um, <laughs> just because I do think it, it has a better uh, through line narrative. Mm-hmm. But. I do think you'll enjoy it. I think most people will actually enjoy the game as long as you're OK with a turn based D and D game, which is a classic role playing game. Like as long as you, it, all that sounds good. Literally, you know, you, and the customization, you know, you can get crazy with it. I, I mm-hmm. very much enjoy it. There's a um. No, I'm not gonna say. Eh, tiny whiny bitty spoiler. There's an uh something happens after the credits in Baldur's Gate that was a very fun lore thing, which I'm like, okay. oh, that that's cool. I did actually have inklings on thoughts and on what was going on there and that was very fun too so there's so much that i love about the game alex Mm. anything else that you want to discuss before um i kind of calm us down lead us into a couple questions and then we leave the achievers Mm. this year's category or their nominees have been it were really weird okay that leads us like, actually uh, beautifully into my question. Um, were there any categories specifically that, that kind of like left a sour taste in your mouth or something that you disagree with? We kind of had the conversations on the fly, but were there something standing out to you? Well, I mean, of course, game of the year. Like, why is there like, why is Resident Evil there? Yeah. For, for once. Um, like certain ones, like, I mean, like, uh, Certain games like weren't like weren't shown as much like you know like we we only saw Starfield once in this whole thing yeah. like Hogwarts wasn't there at all and then that you you were saying earlier is like probably could be because of a certain reason but like that's not the game's fault. I agree. Uh, I I, yeah. I, I want to be make it clear and that's also a problem with kind of the game industry. One, it came out a long time ago and people just yeah. I mean honestly, I I would not be shocked if I, a good percentage of people literally just forgot about the game like straight up don't even remember yep. the game which you could argue is kind of like not voting for it which you know is kind of the same thing and also 
I imagine a lot of the games industry is not voting for Hogwarts Legacy for a very specific reason. And I think mm. we all know what that reason is, whether yeah. you agree or don't agree. You know, that's a fact that we have to face. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I, I, I have to agree with a lot of that, too. Um, I, I do wish we kind of sat down and made definition for things uh, just so we can all stop complaining uh, when these mm-hmm. things are happening. What what's an indie? What's an independent game? What's what's the difference? Why is there a difference? What what uh, what is an action game? What's not an action game? Again, I want to reiterate all these people who are mad about all this. Are the games ones vo- industry are voting for these things. So that means yeah. there's a problem with y'all, my guys, you know, like it's not on us. You know, I, I I'm not I'm not like, being hit up by Jeff for these. So it's on you guys. This is an internal strife that y'all got to figure out. Yeah. There really does need to be a convention for us to discuss yeah. what words mean and what do genres mean, what do category mean, because like clearly it's not working. People all, every every year it's getting worse with the amount of people who are, for lack of a better word, crying about a lot of this stuff. Do you think you would want if they if they came after this after like this year, seeing like they had so much like negativity about all this? Do you think or or want? Would you want them to sit down and be like, okay, we're gonna let you guys be part of it too? So everybody, we're gonna each cat, we're gonna give you the categories. You could put four or five options or whatever, and and but we're part of it too. Like the, the we're the community. I mean, we should matter too. So I was like, if I was if I was like, hey, pick five games for best RPG. I mean, hands down, I'm putting five RPGs in. I mean, some people might not know, like you said, like what are the RPGs going to be, st- is, or if, if best action versus best RPG. But like, I don't know if that would be better or worse having us part of it as well, not just the game industry. I think there's a lot of pros and cons with that. Um, I think it would be nice to be involved in some way as an outsider yeah. in quotes, you know, I just figured like, you know, the more, let's say like the 10, like we're, you know, 30 people in our, in like in our town, let's say five, we, we all put five games down and they pick with we'll see like, let's say two games had the most votes the, the, from our town. Those are the two games that are going into the pool to see who gets picked. I think that's interesting. I, um, I actually wouldn't mind if they just, do what you're saying Mm -hmm. just so there's like a consideration or maybe a baseline they can go off of. Yeah. Um, Because again, clearly there's like a weird, and also I know, I understand like, you know, there's like jokesters and memesters and all these things and they Mm -hmm. would mess up the pool, but I think I'm pretty sure they could get it to where like it, it it would work pretty cleanly, but, but I, I don't hate the idea of getting outsiders more involved in some way. Again, I'm not saying we control the categories or anything like that, but at yeah. least they have data to look at or something. Yeah. Um, no, but that, again, I under- but again, I understand Jeff makes it very clear that he tries not to touch any of this. He doesn't mm. say games, you know, they, literally like people get, the nominees and they write them in like you know he he doesn't really mess with anything like he yeah. so it does seem like he's like this is what they vote for i don't t- like he literally went on to say like i don't tell them to put a game in for that year that's just what they do you know like he uh someone asked him like why can't uh uh just as an example someone said like an online game i don't remember what it was mm-hmm. but let's say it was fortnite and Jeff responded to that tweet and was like, I never said it couldn't be nominated. Just no, they don't do, you know, they don't do it, which is good and bad. You know, it, it, no one, no one in the games industry will really ever do that. But yeah. also it's, uh, it, it, that's both good and bad one, you know, it makes sure we get fresh games every year and Fortnite isn't one of them all the year, but also it keeps, it also keeps it to where if Fortnite really is game of the year, it doesn't really get nominated. Even though technically it did that one time, but th- does that really count? I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, and also, any snubs? Um, we kind of talked that a little bit. You, We mentioned Starfield, Hogwarts Legacy. Anything else that comes to you that you're like, hey, I'm surprised this wasn't showing up at all. I, I would like to add, um, I'm, I'm really sad Lysa P didn't show up more. It, it goes to show I don't really think many people played 
Liza P. Um, yeah. it, it's very, Armor very Core? underplayed. I mean, like we, Armor Core only got one nom- nomination. I mean, at least it got best best action, and I do think yeah. it will win. Uh, it's weird that Liza P wasn't there, and it was under best RPG again. I do think it is an RPG. It's just weird that it wasn't under. Um, Actually, I don't know. Uh, but uh, anything else? Star- uh, we mentioned Starfield. I'm honestly not that shocked with Starfield. Um, I loved Starfield, but just not well, as much as I did other games. So it should. No. I, I although I was like, that's crazy. It's not more places. I was like, well, I I'm needed. surprised it's it not in more places amazing. for the amount of people playing it and creating mm. the ships and the, the for it, me seeing it so much. Like and not and not being part of this nomination early at all, it's surprising. That's that's true. I, I would I'll give you that. It did seem like it was in the zeitgeist. And then it's, it, it, I didn't mean, really pay off for them. Yeah, I mean, it was like for like for like for example, like you know when Elden Ring came out, that's all people were playing. You know, for but for months, Starfield came out. That's all what people were playing for that month. For like, that like, month. For that yeah, yeah a couple weeks. Yeah, like I like it's just I mean, but there was a lot of people, so like it's just weird that like it didn't it, it didn't get in uh, enough consideration, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and again, that goes to show that they didn't think it deserved it, and maybe it didn't, maybe it does. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, I I don't think I don't know. It did trend on Twitter like it wasn't there, so maybe mm-hmm. fans feel like it should have been. I I don't really. I I don't have stake in this game. Be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. is there any category you think should be added? Is there something that you um, think uh, that that should be added? If I may go first, yeah, go ahead. Uh, if we're gonna do best RPG, I really do think we should try and evolve it because RPG is used just too easily now. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if we really sit down and think about it, almost any major game that comes out is just an RPG game, and you can just say it is now, and it doesn't really have a definition which I think goes to show that some of these games are kind of lost in the ether where like, you know, something like Liza P comes up as best RPG. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. It's just when people think about Liza P, I don't think they immediately say it's an RPG game. I think action then RPG hits their mind maybe, Uh, but I don't know. I think we should maybe broaden that. I don't really know how you would, because we're really discussing Western versus Japanese. Mm-hmm. And a Japanese role playing game is almost always very different from a Western role playing game. And I imagine Jeff doesn't want to call two categories that. So that probably won't happen. But I do wish we have some way of doing that where best RPG wouldn't be able to be encapsulated all in one thing. You could argue God of War Ragnarok was an RPG. I don't really yeah. think it was, but you could argue it and you, you know, yeah. pr- could be you right. Changed. I mean, yeah, you had you had you had weapons and you had armor that you could change out and stuff. Isn't that elements of RPG? So yeah, yeah, you had stats. So it's like, yeah. like, what are we talking about here? So either we need like definitions or we gotta like open it up. And also, what are we doing with indies and independent games? It it seems like rules are kind of willy nilly there too, where like a a team that had millions of dollars in their backing could just ship a game and they're an independent too. I'm like. I don't know about that. I think Hades was best indie of one year or something. I'm like that. I mean, I get it, but that's not an independent game. That that game might have cost two hundred million dollars or one hundred fifty million bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's not what we're talking about here. I want a yeah. dude in a fucking basement making a game. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No. Like, uh, like remember uh, Somerville? Like that was an indie game, wasn't it? Uh, you could. Uh, I don't know. Could remember I, it, 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 Somerville, be honest with you. I think so. Yeah. I don't think they were on there. I, oh, wait, no, I think they were bought like right after that. So they were at that moment. Or even uh, or like the one we saw earlier. Would you consider Venba an, an indie or not? Nah? Yeah. No, I would because yeah. um, I believe that studio. Oh, who made Venba? Give me a second. Um, v- you look at v- that. V- v- how do you say this? I'm like, Visai Games? Visai Games? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, they're definitely, I don't think they're owned by anybody. So I definitely would probably yeah. say uh, yeah. they are indie. But also, like, should we make independent studio just means you're not made by someone? Because that, that means Ubisoft's an independent game, independent studio, which is, that's not true. Yeah. Even the technically yes. not publicly owned. But anyways, yeah. go ahead. No, yeah, it's just, no, it's, it's weird. Like, why, why have, 
both of those categories. Because um, because the definition is weird, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no I, I was trying to justify like if, if we have both of them, I'm like, I think it's because one is an ethereal term that we don't really have a definition for. Like indie has turned into. Hey, look at this pixel art game I found like people will, mm-hmm. like like Shovel Knight, like people, you know, like uh, that is an indie. But I'm saying like people use indie very willy nilly now, because I, yeah. if I show someone a 2D pixel art game, I even tweeted about this. They will call mm-hmm. it an indie without ever looking at a publisher or a developer. And they'll just be like, oh, yeah, that's like a action indie game or something like that. Versus yeah, like literally head of Xbox could have made a Pixar 2D game and they'd be like, oh, it's an indie. No, it's <laughs> yeah, a <Pixar> game. <laughs> it definitely is not an indie. A, a billion dollar company made it. So like, that's yeah. not what we're talking about. But I understand that. Yeah, it's hard to give de- something like that a definition that stands up to um, all criticism. I, I mentioned it to you earlier. I would add a uh, best DLC category. Yeah, I'm surprised or that isn't DLC there. or expansion because Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty was good, but I wouldn't consider that a game on its own. That's an expansion slash DLC, right? Like or Horizon Forbidden uh, Forbidden West DLC. Like that ain't that's nowhere on here. I mean, that was really good, but it didn't. If if we had a DLC category, it would have been on there. Right. But like I just feel like certain things got kind of brushed over because so uh, like some sometimes when I do my top 10, I don't consider DLC on there because it's just I mean, like I want the like an actual full game, not just part of the, something I already played. Yeah, you know, so it's hard to judge like it's hard. Yeah, I oh, oh I have to judge just the Phantom Liberty part, even though this one point I did a side quest that was technically in the main game. And, you know, exactly. I, so it, it does get weird and ethereal. I, mm-hmm. I'm shocked there hasn't been a best DLC and expansion category. I would imagine it might be because like. There might not be enough like that enough DLCs Jeff, and stuff. Yeah, like it might not be enough for Jeff to feel like it, it, every year it would be interesting. Yeah, maybe that's I what. guess so. But I, I would have loved to see best DLC expansion because. One, you know, you would I get and it might be become repetitive because like Destiny might be there a lot, you know, like it might yeah. become usual suspects after a while. It's like, you know, oh, you know, that's the category where Destiny and Final Fantasy and Elder Scrolls Online have stuff. But I, I think that, you know, I think that would be good. I think a place where the Elder Scrolls Online's your. I don't know, maybe even Fortnite and seasons or something that you like you can put them there. I don't I I think yeah. I, I agree with you. I think there should be like a DLC expansion additive content thing that happens and maybe seasons mm-hmm. and games can count too. For instance, yeah, like just... maybe the latest Marvel Snap season was really good. So people nominate that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like uh like when we had well, it was this year. I mean, we had which was it this year or last year? Which Queen? When was that? Which last Queen? Year? Which Queen? No, was last year. Oh, Lightfall okay. was this year. Lightfall, thank you. Uh, but we have like light. It would have been Lightfall, Forbid Horizons DLC. We have Tales of Rise DLC that just came out. Yeah. Uh, last week, but uh, I mean, there's uh, that wouldn't have quite made it probably. Yeah, yeah, that probably wouldn't. Have that could have that like, could have been put ahead of time. So it, it actually might yeah. have. Cyberpunk. I mean, like, yeah. there's, 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 they have nominations. I would argue that's like, pretty strong. Do, yeah. So it's just, I mean, like, I'm curious on like why they are like or Elder, Elder Scrolls Necrom. Uh, people love Elder Scrolls. I did hear Necrom was pretty good too. Yeah, so, that was in July. Yeah. So like, I mean, they had time. And that's something. That's a game that's very popular that will never show up on here. Yeah, Elder because Scrolls, like, yeah. why would it? You know, why why would Elder Scrolls uh, Online show up here? But yeah, Final some Fantasy people, is another what example. Was it Black that. Desert? A lot of people love Black Desert. Yeah, that's really popular. What, wasn't there? Uh, didn't Monster Hunter Rise get a, a Sunbreak? And I found it. So like, isn't that a, people love Monster Hunter? I have no I, idea. I got if that's a DLC a or a game. I couldn't tell you. I think yeah, that's well, a port from a Switch game. Okay. And they added stuff to it when they added okay. the consoles. I, th- I gotcha. think. I have no idea. Gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, there's just so many DLCs that I feel like they could be like they can make a good list. I think so, too. I, I agree. I think there should be like a. 
expansion category. It, it, yeah. Maybe not DLC because like downloadable content is such an no, no, yeah, yeah. kind Just of like an ex- outdated like, way of talking about things, but expansion yeah. or something would be really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, best. That's why I was like best expansion DLC, or I don't know, some just something to to help help with those things. Because like like in Burning Shores, like that was really good, but it got so brushed over. It was like no. yeah, I agree. Alex, I don't know. Hmm. That is the Game Awards 2023 nominees, our predictions, and what we voted for. Thank you so much for stopping by. This was very fun. I enjoyed the, I enjoy these. I, I always I know a lot of people like don't necessarily care about the game awards, but I always have fun talking yeah. about the nominees and complaining about like, oh, this didn't do something in X, Y, Z. I don't actually really care about any of this, but it's fun to have fun <laughs> about it. You know, um, yeah. I think it comes out. Alex, can you look? Can you check for me? December 7th, December 7th at 730 Eastern time. All right, perfect. I'll be there watching. I'm sure something cool will be announced. I was looking at the map when you asked. (laughs) I'm sure um, uh, something cool will be announced. Maybe Elden Ring DLC. Uh, Maybe Grand Theft Auto 6. Who knows? I can't wait. But uh, Alex, until the next time. Go Chief. Uh, Remember, uh, check out the interview, uh, the spoiler cast for Spider-Man 2, all those good things. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Go Chief. Thank you.